Okay, let's go to Old Trafford, the Theatre of Dreams, my friend. Jim Ratcliffe's coming out this week in the media and said, mm. you know, he's looking to take Manchester City and Liverpool off the perch in, in the Sir Alex Ferguson sort of quote from back in the day. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, Manchester United's new stadium, the, the Wembley of the North. There's a lot of talk, you know, about bringing in executives. We've got Omar Barada in. They're looking at uh, Dan Ash, Ashworth mm. from um, uh, Newcastle. So, lots of positive off-field talks and, and moves behind the scenes, Rob. But on the on the pitch, four straight wins. Um, you know, we, we're starting to think, is, is this the consistent run that Manchester United needed? And then we get a performance and a result like we got yesterday. Uh, Manchester United won, Fulham two. Mm. No, I looked at this game, Rob. I know it was in that window if, and you had a yeah. different, on, on our, on our oh, air was a yeah. different game. Mm. Um, but I wanted to watch this. And, and first off, the, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, this interview, which I, I watched, um, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Really good. Mm. Like really good. Like saying the right things, not, not looking backwards, looking forwards, yeah. smart approach, getting best in class. Um, he did say that Champions League football is incredibly important to them, mm. um, which this is going to be a blow, mate. If, if they can't if they can't find a way to get into the Champions League, and again, it, we, there might be an extra spot in, yeah, in the Premier League. Fine, we don't yeah. know yet until this season's European competition has kind of come to an end, I think. I don't know the exact details, but it could be five. So there is maybe another spot there, maybe. Um, but playing like this, they got no chance. I mean, it, it, was a, it was back to awful. Back to awful. And I know that there's injuries and Rasmus Hoyland's... Uh, you know, the timing of Hoyland's injury, Luke Shaw going out the side, Rob. We know that Lissandro yeah. Martinez was back and then he was out again. The timing of that was not bad. It was, it was awful. You know, it throws Rashford up front again where he looked he looked lethargic, didn't have much of an impact. Amari Forson as a young kid that got started. You know, Anthony was fit and available. I think he came in in the last Late minute time. of the game, but is absolutely out, out of favour right now. And young Forson started. Now, it's not... Forson's fault. He had very little impact. You know, you start to get to a point, Rob, where there's so many young players out there playing in a situation where the club, the fans, it's not great. It's not yeah. easy to play in that. There's a lot of, you know, Mainu was 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 okay, but he looked a little tired. I thought. I thought Fulham found found ways to play through the Manchester United midfield yeah. all the way through. Yeah. That was really really easy. You got Garnacho that was in and out the game a little bit. I I just think. There's so much. I mean, when, when they go behind, Rob, the, 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 the end, or well, there's one nil down, you know, then then there was a moment in the second half for us like gung-ho. Here we go. And I'm like, here we go. Man United, this is, this is yeah. what they prefer. Like, we're losing. Let's throw everything at them. Let's throw Maguire up front. Let's really, nothing to lose. Let's go yeah. for it. And they look better. They get to 1-1 one, one and you think, mm. you know, th this is the, they're probably going to win the game. But that gung-ho nature catches them out. And Wobie goes up the other end and they score and they lose yeah. the game. It, it, it's been... You know, two steps forward, one back again in this game. And I just, you know, the the, the biggest question is going to be how the, the new ownership okay. feel about the manager. Mm -hmm. And that was an awful exhibit, example of where they're at. You know, the, and I know there's injuries, but every club's got injuries. Yeah, yeah, but to yeah. lose and to get outplayed uh, large periods mm -hmm. by Fulham, Rob, yeah. was a terrible look. It was a terrible look. Casemiro in midfield, and there's no more respect for what he's done and when the medal he's got than me, is is just kind of jogs around. He a few nice little first-time spinners in behind, the first time for, for forwards, but gets caught out. He doesn't really run back. He, he, he hasn't got the energy in there. McTominay came in, uh, I, I don't know when, at some point in midfield. Yeah, because Casemiro came off in a, the, the challenge, didn't he, with Reed? Uh, remember they had a head challenge uh, and he had to come that, off and yeah. McTominay came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it was a it was a it was a shocker. It was a shocker. And uh you know, Eric Ten Hag has said, I think he said after the game, I made a note of it, the team, this is based on them coming back from 1-0 yeah, down yeah. at home against Fulham. He said the team showed big personality and character. Yeah, Eric Ten Hag and they're like the, the future, game. something about the future um, looking bright or something, was it? The bigger yeah, picture, so the bigger I, picture I'm, looking I, bright. Mm. I mean, what, yeah. what we know, it's Robbie, not, with this Jim Ratcliffe and this Ineos group is, you, you said it at the top of the thing, they're talking about excellent, best in class. They're, they're yeah. thorough. Correct. They're experts. They'll yeah. look at data. From what yeah. you're saying, and, and again, I didn't see all the games, so I saw a highlight package. I, yeah. I, I picked up on a couple of uh, yeah. reports after. There was an interesting stat that came out, Rob, that said in the last, I think it's five Manchester United games, they've conceded 100 shots at their goal. 
17 mm. shots yesterday Fulham have. Now, that can't be controlling yeah. a football match if, if Fulham can come away at your ground and have 17 shots. Newcastle didn't have one shot in the first half against Arsenal. Mm. And Newcastle are yeah. a lot more dangerous yeah. team. So, it, 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 you know, for a, t- yeah. for a group like Ineos, who will be looking at data and looking at all those things, I'm surely they're looking at this and thinking, mm, you know. And, and, and I'm now in the position, Rob, where I've got to... I think Ten Hag is a good, honest football man who's doing his best in the circumstances, but I just don't think he's of the ilk that we're talking about Jurgen Klopp mm. and Pep and maybe De Zerbi mm. and, 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 and Arteta. I just don't think he's of that level. Mm. And, and so I don't want to keep criticising him because I think he's a good, honest football guy. Yeah. But I just don't think, Rob, he's in that, that echelon of, of quality. Well, and, and I, I totally agree, Rob. I totally agree. And given what they've done in going for, for really good people from the CEO from Man City, who was almost yeah. the head man there. They got him the head man. Dan Ashworth is going to go from Newcastle. Really, really highly respected as a technical director, director of football. I, I think it makes absolute sense for at the end of the season to thank Eric Ten Hag. Um, you know, did he best that he could, but try and get somebody that is close close to that that sort of respect of being a really top, top manager. And, and again, it's not easy. And I can't throw yeah. a name at you right now. Yeah, just yeah. thinking that, it, yeah. you know, but um, I agree. And I, I'd be really surprised if Eric Ten Hag stays on, give them what they want. They want a clean slate, a, f- a fresh sheet of paper. Okay. What do we want here? The, the, the director is going to be in place. The, everything's kind of going to be in place for them to make and find the right guy. They've got time now between now and the end of the season to put their feelers out, to, to really, kind of and and, and in th- a really interesting thing that Sir Jim Ratcliffe said in the interview Rob is that they'll always walk to the right decision and not run to the wrong one yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's yeah, like really nice this kind of smart like to yeah. take the time to get yeah. the right person and not rush to get somebody who's not yeah. quite right so now they've got time to walk to the end of the season to find the right person with the director with the CEO to totally change this thing. And I think, you know, again, it, it, this isn't reacting off of the one game that was a, that no, was a bad no, game, but no. it, it's, it's yeah. you know, we've all it's seen the pattern, club and this, yeah. this manager work now for a long period of time. And there's been some good work and mm. stuff. There's good performances where I'm saying like, that's better. That's, that's Man United. And that's what we want to see. And don't change this, this and that. And, and they've had to do that through injury, but still, it should have been better than that. And to, to get really kind of played through many, many times by Fulham is an awful look and um, one that I don't think we're going to see next year. And before we move on, mate, I want to go to my underappreciated oh. form of the week. And it's a cl- it's to a club at Fulham that at times I, I take the criticism. We don't give enough love to. We don't give enough air time to. Mm. Obviously, the, it's not yeah, that often the that they're yeah. the main game, so we don't always yeah. get a chance to see them. But I'm gonna, I, I, I want to point to their manager, mate, Marco Silva. You talk about managers and... I remember sitting mm. down, we sat down with him in the summer series uh, before the ball was kicked and, and there was, Mitrovic was going, the Saudi thing was on, he didn't know what was happening, he didn't have money mm. to spend, mm. he, was talk, he was talking himself about whether he was going to leave to go to Saudi, he, he said to us, Rob, and I remember his words where we were two weeks before the end of the season, he said, we are no near, nowhere near ready, prepared for the start of this season. Yeah. But he had to go with what he went with. Mm. He, Raul Jimenez came into the football club as somebody who could help them. Mm. He's, he's, I've always thought, and I still consider Marco Silva to be a very good Premier League manager. I think he's yeah. had difficult circumstances. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think once or twice he's maybe helped himself with some of the decisions or ways he's gone about things. But I just believe... With a great, with the right group of people, with the right support, and I'm not talking spending hundreds of millions, but bringing in key players, I still think he's a very, very good manager there, mate. And I don't think he gets enough credit. Mm. They're nowhere near the relegation. Mm. They go to Manchester United. I mean, yesterday they go to Manchester United. Mm. And I know United's tactic was, you know, after Maguire's equalised the Bassey goal, then let's go for it. But at 1 1, you know, mm. Fulham might have been happy, like, that's a great point away from home. No, he, mm. he gets Traore on, Traore runs down mm. the side, squares it across to Wobi, and they get the goal. And I, I still think Marco mm. Silva has got lots of upside and is one of those managers who we overlook now. We're looking at all the new ones and people overseas, and, and uh, Marco Silva is a very, very capable coach. Uh, and Fulham is a football club that doesn't get enough attention. 
Uh, I, I like it, mate. I like it because, you know, again, w when a manager and a club sit in the middle and they don't get too mm. far towards the European, they don't yeah. come too far, it's out, off, off our kind of immediate story yeah. radar. Mm -hmm. And Fulham have done that. And when you look at their team, I've just got their team up. I mean, it's not a great looking squad. It's not a great looking team. They, he, he's do, he does amazing with a, with in some ways an average set of players. Timothy Castagna was at Leicester City. You know, Anthony Robinson's a good solid left back, not a, not a world beater. Andres Pereira is released from Man United, not deemed to be good enough. Alex Awobi's jumped around the league a little bit. You know, and Munez up front, this is new, the new guy playing up front where Raul didn't work out very well. He's did, uh, Harry Wilson, of course, has jumped around a little bit, former yeah. Liverpool guy. I mean, they have... You know, Burnt Leno sort of kicked out of Arsenal. So it, it's not, it is a squad that we could be saying, God, they struggle and they, you know, they, they, they're going to fight to fight relegation. Not been in the picture. Smart manager, good manager, experienced manager now. He's been around English football yeah. a long, long time, yeah, Marco yeah. Silva. Sometimes gets a little fired up and he's a little mm. prickly sometimes in interviews. Yeah. But I think it's a good shout. He's done an excellent job and we can't, you know, we can't, we can't study every team and talk thoroughly about yeah. every team on the podcast, Rob. We'll be here for days. But it, it, and I, I know what you mean, and I apologise to Fulham fans that we don't maybe feature them enough because there's so many stories to go on in this league yeah. that we, yeah. we feel that we have to hit. But so it's a good mention of a good club in a lovely part of London. That's a good place to play, even though the last time I went there, I got elbowed in the face and split my lip right down here. Apart from that, love playing at the cottage, and um, and they're doing and the manager doing a great job. So yeah, good show, mate. Good one. Good yeah. one. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.